Beloved, as you know, we are in a sermon series going through the book of Revelation. We are now in the third sermon that is in our introduction to the book. And one of the things that we'll see in this section, we're in Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 through 20. So as Mark has encouraged us in weeks before, read it beforehand. Soak in it beforehand. See the text. What do you learn about yourself? What do you learn about Christ? And why will this be so encouraging for you? And Mark, as you've been now in the text for quite a while, we just finished sermon review. What are you encouraged by as you've been meditating on this text? Well, um, I love verse 9. I mm. think in some ways verse 9 is almost sort of the, the whole book in, 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 in microcosm. John says, I, I, John, your brother and partner, in, and then he says three things, in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus. Yeah. And I think that really captures what's going on in the yeah. book and in our lives. He gives us our situation yeah. in the tribulation. Well, the, the tribulation isn't some big thing that's going to happen right before Jesus returns. It's, it's what Christians live in yeah. as, as, as his embattled people yeah. um, experiencing the onslaught of, of the enemy and the resistance of the world in, in the midst of all the fallenness. We live in this tribulation, but that's only part of our experience. The other part is that our hope. We live in the kingdom. Yeah, man. And, and this passage puts the king in front of us with this glorious vision of the exalted Christ yeah. who's so spectacular in his unveiled, revealed glory yeah. that John, if this was John the Apostle, I think it was, yeah. when he sees him in his unveiled glory, he knows this guy, and, and yet when he sees him, he falls down as though dead because Jesus is so great, and, and yet he's so loving, he reaches out his hand, and, and Jesus says, no, come on, I've got something for you to do. Stay, Amen. stay in my service. And, and that, that's the hope of the kingdom so that we might patiently endure. Mm. And so it tells us our situation, it tells us our hope, and, and then it sort of sets the course for, well, how, how do we live? What keeps us going? We, we patiently endure when we know our situation, but we know how great and glorious Christ is, mm. and that he's coming back. And, yeah. and in the meantime, he's using us to expand his kingdom. So that little verse, part of verse 9, I, I'm so excited because I think Amen. in some ways that's the book just, just shrunk down into, into a couple phrases. Amen. And so the Christian life is one that we're, we're all embattled. It's not just a few select people. That's right. Every Christian's an embattled Christian, and we need this exalted view of Christ, this glorious view of Christ. And, and I don't know about you all, but I've read it, and it, sometimes I have to like read it over and over again. How does he describe it? White hair, snow, bronze, all of these different things. How does this exalted view of Christ give us the power, give us the ability to endure. Yeah, well, he's he's our king, yeah. and uh, he's in charge. Mm -hmm. And so the, the I, in the Gospels, we get to see Jesus as he comes to earth in his incarnation, as he lives on earth. And when people see him, they don't necessarily recognize at all that he's any different than anybody else. When you see Jesus in his ascended state, mm -hmm. you know it. Amen. Because he's the boss, yeah. and he's in charge of history. Yeah. And, and, and that means he's in charge of not only his people, but his enemies. Amen. And, and he's using us to gather a worldwide people until he comes back, bringing judgment and salvation. And so seeing this vision of the ascended Christ is what we need Amen. To, to, to make it through our, our everyday lives. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And one of the other things that Mark brought up in the midst of sermon review was not only do we have this exalted view of Christ, we also see his personal nature. So John yeah. falls down, yeah. and Jesus doesn't say, get up, as, as some distant, right. exalted one, yeah. alone, yeah. but reaches out his right hand. Yeah. What's the significance of his right yeah. hand in that yeah. personal connection? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. The right hand is this uh, sort of symbol of, 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 of authority and yeah. power. And, and we've already seen he's holding the stars in, in the right hand, which represent the churches. Well, when he puts his right hand out to John, he, and he, he says, fear not, Amen. fear not. It, it means all his power and authority is, is also expressed in his, in his loving kindness and his mercy uh, to a frail human being just like us. Amen, yeah. amen. Well, thank you for your diligent efforts. Yeah. How can we be praying for you as the one who's laboring well right behind me? 
to yeah. know, feed, lead, and protect us in the midst of this embattled life that we're all in. Yeah. How can we be praying for you? Well, thanks. I, you can be praying for me that what John experiences when he hears and sees this voice, yeah. that I can have that experience as I'm, I'm working through this text and rising to preach it on Sunday. And yeah. that we, that, that, that's something we can all experience freshly. Amen. Yeah. Well, so beloved, if you would be praying for Mark, but also be praying for yourself and be praying for each other as we encounter this exalted and spectacular view of Christ, our Redeemer. Love you and excited to see you this Sunday.